crossing down to Manchester and finally the end of the coast here about 10 to 12 miles away is Gloucester, Massachusetts, big fishing capital. Um, the Gloucester fishing schooners you guys have all heard of were actually built in a neighboring town, a little muddy village called Essex, which is famous for building wooden schooners. And the original name of the building, Carol Burton, is named been building boats in Essex for about, I don't know, since the 1640s. How long is that? A long time. Who knows the history of this boat? Anybody? What do you guys know about the fame? <laughs> In one ear, out the other? It's a boat. Okay, what kind of boat is it? It's a privateer. Uh, what, what kind of rig is this? Is it a ship? Is it a brig? A sloop? A schooner? What? Schooner. It's a schooner. What makes it a schooner? It's got at least, yes, a schooner has to have two masts. And the important thing is actually not so much the number of the masts or the shape of the hull, but how the sails are arranged on the mast, right? So you guys have all had a good look at the Constitution and the Friendship. Those are square rigged vessels. There are no square rigged sails on board the Fame. So the advantage of this rig, which is a more recent rig than the square rig, are basically, well, two of the concern us today. Number one is it takes a lot fewer men to run this boat than would run the Constitution or the Friendship. Irrespective of the size difference of the two vessels, a square rig is just a more complicated rig. It's more difficult to adjust and raise and set the sails. Uh, this boat can be run by a man and a boy in any kind of fair weather. And Bob and Nicole and I honestly could take this boat just about anywhere in any weather um, because she's a schooner. That's the great thing about schooners. And that's why they were immediately seized upon when they were developed by people who were looking to save money. So they became very popular with merchant people, uh, became very popular with fishermen. More people fishing, less people handling the sails and the rigging, right? You can make more money that way. So the, the schooner starts to develop, at least the American version of the story, the schooner starts to develop in the early 1800s. Um, it starts primarily with small vessels. This particular kind of schooner is a tobacco schooner. It's called tobacco because that was the original name of Essex, Massachusetts. It was part of Ipswich uh, until it became its own town in, I think, 1819, after the War of 1812. Uh, they called these little tobacco boats because it was a very popular design. They started much smaller than this, and it was such a popular design that when they needed bigger boats, they just built bigger copies of the small design. That's why, if those of you who are sailors or, or have looked at ship models at all, you may notice that our bowsprit is off-center. It's like an afterthought. You see, on the center line of the bow, you've got a stem, that big piece of wood that sticks up, and the bowsprit is kind of stuck on there on the side. That's because this boat was originally not designed to have a bowsprit at all. But as they built them bigger and they decided they wanted a bowsprit, they wanted a jib, they just cut a hole in the cap rail to the right of the, of the, uh, of the stem and ran a, a plank out there. So then the plank became a spar, and then it became a fairly good-sized spar. And that allowed them to sail the boats a little bit more aggressively and put more sail on. But really, this is just a design that was the same design for 70 years. They kept building these boats because it was a very popular and effective design. And no matter where they were built, they called them tobacco boats. They built boats like this all over Massachusetts, all over the District of Maine, and up and down the Canadian Maritimes. And they were like the blue Chevys of the 19th century. These boats were a dime a dozen. You saw them everywhere. Nobody in their right mind would ever build a replica of a vessel like this, except maybe the Essex Shipping Museum and, you. and me. Right. <laughs> but we built a boat, we built this replica, not because we thought tobacco boats were that interesting, because this particular tobacco boat, the Fame, was built in Gloucester, about 10 miles down the coast here, actually part of Gloucester called Anaswam, if anybody knows it. And it was built right before the War of 1812. And at that time, all the people who lived around here, whether you were from Marblehead or Manchester or Salem or Beverly, you were looking at loss of income, loss of employment for the duration of the war. Because we were about to declare war on Great Britain, who was not only our largest trading partner, but also the owner of the world's largest fleet. And that meant vessels like the Friendship, which had put Salem on the map by traveling all over the world and bringing back exotic cargoes to Salem. That's not going to happen during a war with Great Britain.